What's up, guys? Ricky here. Uh, very last recap review that I'm going to do. Uh, if you guys heard earlier, I'm going to be consolidating all my other CW show recap and reviews into one big episode. So this is going to be my last legit recap review for a single episode and for good reason. This is the Arrow Season 8, Episode 10, the final one. The final episode, the goodbye, the funeral to... Oliver and everything that he's done and accomplished and added to this amazing CW pantheon that we have. Uh, episode starts off, we realize that when Oliver created or when Oliver saved our universe from crisis and rebirthed it, he was able to save Moira. So we see a flashback of uh, Oliver stopping Slade, cutting himself free, stopping Slade, and saving Moira. And then it, it shifts over to Moira talking about that moment. And I was like, oh god, no. Please. Please don't let this be documentary style. And luckily, it wasn't. Uh, portions of it are. This episode is very, very heavy in flashbacks and callbacks and that weird documentary stuff which i'm glad they stopped right at like about i think it was like maybe the 15 minute mark or something like that because i i hate documentary style uh, i think legends did it earlier but they did it really tongue-in-cheek so that was okay but in this case just come on i just want to see the emotion and diggle brought it hard i mean the diggle moments in this episode are super emotional Felicity came back also. Her reactions when she's talking with Mia, it was good. It, it, it reminded me a lot of what I thought was missing when Nora was on The Flash uh, last season. Where I could tell that they wanted to make it emotional. But because she was there for so long or they got to interact with her for so long. or they And they also knew that they were going to be creating her in the future it was just i don't know it didn't it didn't have the same impact on me as as felicity did when felicity is is offered the opportunity to talk to mia and she declines it because she knows that she's going to get to see me in the future and oliver never will and then when she realizes that mia actually did meet oliver that her facial acting in that scene is just man it was powerful it was it was good stuff diggle's eulogy was good the main uh not too much content in this episode the main uh the main conflict i guess is the fact that uh william was kidnapped from his home and they're trying to find out where he is which I guess is supposed to mirror the fact that William was also kidnapped in last week's episode in the future. So this guy is just super prone to being kidnapped. He just has kidnapped written all over his like forehead, I guess. He's asking for it. So everyone's trying to find him. Everyone comes back. Uh, Thea comes back. Uh, Roy, Roy comes back with his uh, arsenal robotic arm. Roy, I guess, the way I took it, and this came super out of left field, and I must have missed something. When Roy comes back, it seems like he just wants to talk to Thea again, or reconcile, or, you know, just pick up the relationship where it left off. So he's trying to just sneak in a word, and finally, when he's able to just pull me aside, pull Thea aside, and talk to her for just, you know, what seemed like maybe a minute at most... He's like, oh, so do you accept my my uh, my proposal? Like, you know, do you forgive me? And I took that as his proposal of, do you accept me walking out on you? And are you ready for us to, you know, be a couple again? She's like, yeah, I'll marry you. I was like, holy sh crap. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Well, that was a marriage proposal? That's what that was? Doesn't matter. It's still good. They're a good couple. Thea's red uh eyeshadow though on fleek as the kids say that looked good that is great makeup with her red suit and then also mia's as much as i hate mia 
that uh, glittery green eyeshadow or eye black that she uses with her mask. Beautiful. Good stuff. Makeup department. You guys knocked it out of the park on this episode, if nothing else, because the majority of it was flashbacks. And if those flashbacks told me one thing, it was, oh my god, do I miss season one Arrow. That, that, they had like an extended warehouse beat em up. I don't know if that was pulled from it. It had to have been, right? It had to have been. But man, if that's what it... That had to have been, right? Pulled from a, a season one episode? If that or they recreated it really well, but I miss that stuff. It was super dark and action heavy. <sighs> Made me miss season one so much. But it, it, the show did a great job of showing what Oliver meant to his team, what it, what he meant to the city. Uh, Quentin's. Uh, uh, Mayor Lance's uh, eulogy also when they unveil the Oliver statue, which I took as like a callback to the Dark Knight Rises, when they unveil the statue and everyone's there. That was great. For me, it was the funeral scene. When you see, I don't know, that other, she, was it last season? I don't remember, but it was Oliver's stepsister, the bitch. I don't even remember what happened to her at the end of that season, but she showed up. She was alive. I'm assuming she was dead. I don't know. I don't care. Super forgettable for me. There was a lot of seasons of Arrow, like after, I want to say season three, that are completely forgettable to me. Prometheus was okay. But she comes back. Tommy comes back. Even just in that small moment, Tommy coming back, I was like, oh, I miss that guy so much. So it's good seeing him back. Uh... I saw, I guess, some sort of weird chemistry between him and Laurel. Really odd, though. Like, I would have been freaked out if I had a wife that was I found out was dead on this earth, and then she's also there, and she's wearing, like, a pixie cut, and she's blonde. I would have... It would have, it would have weirded me out. But he took it in stride, literally, as they stride out of the camera frame. And then... Felicity is able to be consoled by... You know, the main uh, CW shows that spun off from this or were inspired by this. And that's where it was, wow. Where you get to see, you know, the fact that Sarah came from there. And now Sarah became the Legends of Tomorrow. And then Barry shows up as the cute little class act that he does. And then, you know, tries to console her and says, you know, I tried everything. And Felicity's like, I know, I know you. I know if you were there, you would have tried everything you possibly could. Barry does great and then walks away and then Kara shows up and it's just wow when you realize what that one show started and the way it started the way it was so grounded in reality and it seemed like we were never going to get superpowers we were never going to get magic we were never going to get time travel we we're never going to get all that comic booky stuff and then you realize what it has sparked where it sparked not only uh, The Flash, but it's also sparked Supergirl. And with Supergirl, you get interdimensional travel. And now there's a now there's a watchtower and Martian Manhunter. And that the fact that that show started on CBS, but now because arrow on cw was so popular and was so successful that even when cbs wasn't willing to you know pony up the money to keep that show going cw takes it in and takes it under its umbrella and just keeps on the same storyline just accepts the show and keeps it going on a totally different earth and then we have black lightning and then we have Batwoman, where they said they were never going to have any ties to Batman or Gotham or anything. And then we end up having that one. And then they bring them all in for crossovers. And then you have Legends of Tomorrow that's jumping through space. And it's just an amalgamation of all these other superheroes from all these other storylines and times. And it's amazing what came from that. And then you think of Crisis on Infinite. You think of any of the crossovers by themselves was an accomplishment and then you think of what crisis on infinite earths was able to do where it brought in uh 
Ezra Miller from the actual movie universe and then brings in Kevin Conroy from the animated series and brings in Tom Welling from Smallville and is able to bring it in only because of the popularity of these shows that were started because of Arrow. It's wow. It was I got emotional at the end of it just because of what it created and what it sparked. And then Diggle, I mean, you have to talk about it, right? Diggle, the asteroid crashes right in front of him. He gets thrown up against a moving van, opens up the little box. You can only assume it's it's the Green Lantern ring. So what does that mean? I don't know. I know there's supposed to be a Green Lantern show on uh, HBO Max. I Is he going to be on there? Is he going to show up on cameos on Supergirl or... Some of the other shows, I have no idea, but it, if anything, it's just a celebration of what this show was meant. It meant a lot to me. It, it, it was amazing. I, I remember watching, I remember watching this show live when it came out. I didn't see the first episode live. I think I got in like right around episode four or five of season one, but it was it was the last superhero show that I can honestly remember wanting to watch live, wanting to rush home to make sure I was home by seven or eight. I think it it would always be at seven. It, rushing home to be home at seven o'clock and watching it and, and following all of these YouTubers and uh, reading articles on places like Batman News on like what was going to happen, what were theories and stuff like that and being excited about it. I hadn't been excited about a show like that since... I was like nine years old wanting to rush home and watch Batman the Animated Series when it would come out. It was, it's changed uh, the way we watch TV on cable. I mean, I know Netflix did great things with Daredevil and stuff and you now we have DC Universe, but when you think of basic cable like ABC, CBS, NBC, and not only that, they... The, the Arrowverse has brought us Constantine, where Constantine was canceled on NBC, which was to a travesty. That was a great show. Got canceled on NBC, and then we ended up having the cachet to bring in Constantine on The Legends of Tomorrow. It, man, I'm going to miss it. it. It was great. I'm not even going to... I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a 10. And I'm not giving it a 10 because it was a great series finale. I'm giving it a 10 because... God damn it. It's gone. It's over. And we may get that that Green Arrow and the Canaries crap. But that I'm not excited about that. And no. No. I'm just I'm not excited about that. But this show was meaningful. This show meant a lot. And it was a great send off. And the very last scene, if I can just talk about it real quick, it's Oh, it was Felicity meets up with the monitor in 2040. Ends up meeting with him at this abandoned road and ends up, you know, telling him, I want, I want to go back. I want to see him. And, or I want to, I want you to take me to him. And he's like, you know, if I take you there, you can never come back. So she's like, I'm ready. Like everything I've needed to do here on, at this time period on this earth, I'm done. I, I've raised my kids. I've done what I've had to do to help them. I'm ready to go to my husband. And he takes her there. And it's it's the office from season one where, you know, he first saw her. Or no, not where he was, first of all. And I think it was in the later episodes where they show one of those weird flashbacks where he was on the island, but he wasn't really on the island. He was, you know, working for the League of Shadows or he was, you know, working in China or whatever. And. He's, you know, rocking that horrible wig that he always used to have and is looking at her through the window. And he's like, this is the first place where I saw you. And they look out of the of the Queen Consolidated building. And he's like, you know, I'm going to have all the time in the world to tell you about this. It, it got me. It got, it got me because it wasn't heaven. It was... Not to get too philosophical on you guys, I'm going to make it short because I know I'm already at 15 minutes, but that's always the way that I perceive 
immortality or the fact that people say when you die you don't really die i always think of it as if there are really infinite universes and infinite universes and time is really infinite and all of this stuff then that means that there's of course the way people say you know there's universes where you know instead of turning right you turn left so all of the things that would have happened in that scenario happen and after the next intersection instead of turning right you turn left and all those things would have changed and you know millions of different possibilities if you really believe in that then you really have to believe in the fact that you don't really die you just that consciousness shuts down and somewhere else in another universe you wake up again and you relive that life over and over and over again throughout time so it'd be conceivable that as the specter or as you know the monitor having his you know ability to manipulate time and space that he'd be able to create them a universe where they just get to live together and enjoy each other because they never got to when they were team arrow it was always somebody that needed to be saved always somebody that was in danger always something that was putting stress on the relationship and when they were fine I still remember that that season seven uh, season ending season finale of, of season seven where you know he's Mia's just born and he's holding her and the monitor comes and he tells him it's time and it was you could just see in his face where he just he was like come on really like I can never get a break and he finally got it and he'll finally get to enjoy being with it was it was perfect 10 out of 10 great episode uh i go back to that those last few words um the the montage in the end of the dark night when lucius fox is shutting down uh that that computer where you know where they had been tapping into everybody's cell phones and everything and and he says and Batman tells him when when you're done doing what i need you to do type in your name so he types in lucius fox and all the computers start shutting down and, and you hear that voice over from uh from bruce and he's saying you know sometimes people deserve to have their faith rewarded and and that's what i felt like with this show it was I felt good you know even though Oliver was dead he still gets to be with Felicity who even though he was never with her in the comic book she was created for the show it was she they deserved that and Diggle deserved to be the hero he deserved to say suit up or with the whole team there and and the whole team was together that I always it always irritated me so many times when that team was always broken apart because there were just too many members and they were always mad at each other and they were together and they were honoring him and it was good and Thea got to be happy and Moira got to live and Tommy got to be happy and be alive and and all these other shows spin off of it and I'm done rambling guys I know it's it's been too long and I'll just leave it at that but if you guys like this video or, or, or honestly did what do you guys think am I did I let my emotions get in the way did Am I overshooting it? Was this not as good as I'm saying? What do you guys think? Leave your comments below. Like and subscribe the video. If you guys want to stick around for the other CW shows, you know, feel free to, you know, stick around. Like I said, I'll be power ranking those once a week at the, at the end of every week. And if nothing else, I really hope to see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching.